Oh, uh, that's much better. Oh, oh, sorry. Oh, sorry. Oh, yeah, Blade Channel 9. I put it off to the side so you didn't have to look at it. Blades. <laughs> 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 Phantom lights. Phantom lights. Yes, right. Let's just let the sunlight come on. You want to put it on? Put the rolling? Uh, yeah. Good morning, everybody. Uh, thank you for being here this morning. This morning I am here uh, with senior leaders from uh, SAPOL, from the Country Fire Service and the Metropolitan Fire Service. Today we launch Operation Nomad, a dedicated uh, operation with dedicated resources to monitor known and suspected fire bugs this fire season. This fire season uh, will be a return to what we describe as normal conditions. And normal conditions here in South Australia, particularly in the Mount Lofty Ranges, are one that requires very significant vigilance from not only our community, but of course from our emergency services as well. Um, shockingly, sadly, and breathtakingly, we still have people that live amongst us in our community that pose a risk for lighting fires. Uh, they pose a very significant risk to life and to property. And they also pose a very significant risk to the safety and well-being of our first responders. This summer, as is the case every summer, our, our, our frontline agencies, led by police, uh, lead Operation Nomad to uh, tackle and monitor these known firebugs. This is very firmly about keeping our community safer. It is yet another demonstration of the exceptional work that our emergency services and frontline agencies do together to keep our community safe. My message is very clear that if you are thinking of lighting a fire, if you have a predisposition to cause this type of heartache and grief for our community, uh, you're being watched, you are being monitored, and whether you are being seeing a marked police car, uh, whether you are being covertly monitored from the air above, uh, you've got nowhere to hide. So don't step out of line this summer. Keep safety of our first responders in your minds. Uh, keep them safe. Off well to Jonathan and Andrew the CFS.
go to court and have a sentence of life imprisonment if you're convicted of causing a good We're so just bring the CFS and then the and then go to questions. The partnership we have with South Australian Police through Operation Nomad is absolutely invaluable. South Australian communities have zero tolerance for this kind of behaviour and the support we've received from the police in ensuring that these individuals don't have the opportunity for light fires is absolutely invaluable. Every fire that is prevented is one less threat to South Australian lives and communities and one less incident where our emergency services have to risk their lives diligently protecting life and property. So, we're incredibly grateful for the proud of the partnership we have with the police through Operation Nomad and the work it does. It does get results and it is a worthwhile program. I'd also just like to touch on the fact that today the, uh, the remaining fire ban districts in the state have now, uh, now commenced fire season. So the whole state of South Australia is now under fire danger season conditions. As the Minister touched on, we are expecting a normal or average fire season for South Australia. And what that means though, is that we will see fires across the state. We've already seen fires across the state. We will see fires of increasing intensity, increasing severity. And now is the time, particularly once we have this unseasonably mild weather for the last few days and a couple of days ahead, now is the time if you get to prepare to do so, to get your bushfire plan prepared and discussed with your family prepare around your property and create a safe space for yourself and for firefighters in the event of an emergency. To know where you will go, what you will take, how you will get there, should the fire threaten your safety. Our focus is here as well as some of those people who are and those people travelling around the state during the holiday period. We know South Australians love travel and exploring that beautiful state, but when you're in an area that you might not attend very often, you might only be there, uh, for that, that holiday, it's important that you know where the safe places are and importantly where the high risk areas are so that you can avoid those in the event fire threatening your safety whilst you're on holiday. And for those living on rural properties, having a safe place around your, your critical assets, around the house, around the machinery shed, having a plan that is discussed with everybody who might work or live on a property is absolutely crucial. So there are our focuses for, for this year. Um, and as I said, we know there will be fires, it is only a matter of time uh, and we urge people to take that risk seriously. Fred, how, um, how dry is South Australia? And, you know, is it tinderbox ready or is it, where, where does it sit? We're sitting, we're sitting uh, a couple of weeks ahead of where we would normally see the, the conditions and you see that evident through the, the harvest that's occurred around South Australia. You see harvest has started early, it's finishing earlier in places. It's really indicative of the fact that the conditions are dry. So that risk is there. When you have such dry fuels, the only thing we're missing is the, the heat and the strong winds. And you have everything that's needed for disastrous fires to impact our state. So we're taking this very seriously and we urge South Australians to do that as well. Fires and 26 uh, had some results in. Uh, about four people arrested, a number of fines issued. Um, but one fire is too many. So, but the fact that we've been able to take action uh, is a really good result for us. So, and hopefully, gets the message to those people. Um, so, not only those that deliberately light fires, but those that are negligent through the, the work that they do on machinery, on farms, tool, power tools. And there's too many fires that get started that way. So, you know, we will have a zero tolerance approach. Uh, we will issue fines, we will arrest people where we can and need to. John, were the numbers down of previous years, uh, that, that 50, 53 or what um, have you? I don't have the numbers from the previous year, but they're relatively consistent. There hasn't really been a huge spike. It might have been a lot higher last year because the number of fires weren't as bad as previous years. Are you aware of any further for this old people, but I guess in particular teenagers, playing with aerosol, parents and lighting fires since the show? Yeah, nothing um, that I'm aware of since the Stirling fire. I know it's been an issue that they have identified through um, the Mount Barker area and around the Stirling area, um, but I haven't been briefed in relation to it. It's been ended further in the Do you think that incident served as a, a warning to any teenagers as I do? 
but it just goes to show you know a single spark can make can cause um, a significant fire whether it's out in the open or whether it's in a bed. It's only one thing you operate but how taxing is a fire season where you are having to deal with these deliberately lit fires that take resources from helping other people that can't That's what we're here for. We're here to help people, we're here to protect the community and we'll do what we need to do 24-7, 365 days a year. And it's a strain on resources and it's a strain on people and it's a strain on the environment. Yeah. 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 Yeah